morning guys, November 8th, 2021. And I gotta go change an oil tank. Um, at a trailer park. A little mobile home, so the tank's outside. And he's got a, he's supposed to be running kerosene in there, so. I can come off the bottom of the tank. The regular oil tank. I talked to the uh, fire inspector in the town, and he said it's all right if I run a steel tank. As long as it's secure and it's not going to tip over type of thing, so um, some towns want, they don't want the steel tanks outside. Depends on, you know, how strict the guy is and what he wants type of thing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to put a nice base underneath the, um, take, remove the old tank, put a nice cement block base underneath way a, a continuous slab and then put the tank on there fasten it secure it somehow to the trailer and uh, run a new oil line like I said he's supposed to be running kerosene so you come off the bottom of the tank with a regular filter if he's running home heating oil he's supposed to come off the top of the tank if it's in a freezing environment but I think I'll be all right coming off the bottom. It's less headaches than pulling the vacuum off the top. Less callbacks. And uh, I got rail flanges for the bottom of the tank, so I'm gonna go with 12 inch nipples and rail flanges. We'll try to get you some shots if I can. I got the bent alarm off and stuff right up. We've got a little bit of oil in there. He's running regular oil, not kerosene. I told him that. He's got to run kerosene. I got a tip, try to get as much oil. I got a new filter in there. Probably gonna have to run out and get some stone or something. See how it's all through all kinds of shit back there. Unbelievable. We won't know until we get it out. barrel here I should take it hopefully look at the shit underneath the tank unbelievable I gotta clean all this out got the tank over there I got a couple of sheets of plywood that I brought <laughs> I'm gonna probably clean this up go get some stone or something and Make like a nice base here. I got a bunch of blocks. I'm gonna make a nice base out of blocks, but I'm gonna get some kind of. I gotta clean it up. I'm a flipping joke. Unbelievable. If there's any rats or shit underneath this thing. Alright, okay, so I got all the blocks. I kind of gonna kind of tip it a little bit. And, uh, we're gonna strap it on the side here. Put these scooters, good wood there. Script, put it, gonna wrap this around this way, and then I'm gonna put another one around that way on that one. You know, so the tank's gonna go right against the building right there. I got the legs on. Got the legs on there. I'm gonna have to get my car and get this over there now. I got plywood. I might just put it on the plywood and drag it over. So I brought the plywood over here so I could drag it. See if we can get it on there and then I gotta run a new oil line. I figured that was the best way to wrap this around. I got one here, then I'll loop this one around and clip it. It's gonna be fast, it's supposed to be fastened. Alright, so I got it all and I got it all strapped. I got the vent here and the fill. Fill in the vent. Fill go there, the vent's here, the arm's going that way. I'm gonna come off the top of the tank because he's running regular. He's not running kerosene, which he's supposed to. I put a firematic down there with a plug. I could fill it now. But top of the tank's like 45. This is off the top of the tank like 45. And I put this duplex fitting. It's got a thread here. I'm gonna come off the top with um, 
38 black, you know, to a firematic and a filter. And I put a check valve on the bottom. I'm gonna be like three inches off the ground, three, four inches off the ground, off the bottom of the tank. I like to put a check valve here with the arrow going the right way. Because what's gonna happen is, um, see the arrow? Once I pull the vacuum, I won't lose the vacuum on the one pipe system with a check valve in there, but you can't blow it back. That's the only drawback of that, but you could take it apart and screw it. So let me get that in. And, uh, then I gotta run the oil line. I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna stop dumping the oil back in here, I guess, now. I can do that now. It's coming along. I would have liked to pour a nice slab, but I really couldn't. I didn't have the... Uh, I guess I could have moved the tank and pour a regular slab, but the guy can't be without heat, right? What did you say? You got it off on the thermostat? Okay. No fire manic, that's no good. I gotta I gotta I gotta put a fire manic, I gotta bring a new oil line through. Put a, uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do here. It's not good like that. Legally. You're supposed to be running kerosene. You're not supposed to be running heating oil in a uh, in one of these trailers. You're supposed to run kerosene by law. Did you know that? By law, by law you're supposed to run kerosene inside the trailer. That's the truth. All the all the trailer parks have kerosene. I'm surprised the guy even sells it to you. You never said nothing to you, the guy with the oil? No. I mean, it'll work. It just, you know. It's supposed to be kerosene. I don't know. That's what, that's what I've always been told.
right, so I got it all, got all the oil back in it. Got about three eighths of a tank, I guess. Well, half in, half a tank. And uh, got a firematic here. Got a filter. Can't put the filter inside because there's no room for it. And I put a clip here. I, you know, ran a new line. And I put a heavy-duty brass nut on there. That's what you should use on the outside weather conditions. So all you gotta do is just go bleed the inside, and I should be good. And I gotta cut the old tank up, so I'm gonna be here a while yet. I'm a big fan of using the blocks, but I really didn't have other, no other choice. It would have been nice to put a nice slab there, but uh, guy can't be without heat. Let me go in and uh, prime the prime the furnace and change the nozzle, and we should be good. Started. I gotta hit the prime button. I'm gonna try to see if we get an oil flow here. safety. Once we get it primed, once we get it primed, it'll be fine because it's got the check valve in there, right? It's on prime mode now. So I give it a good one. She's a crusty one, Mr. Grinch. She's a crusty one, Mr. Grinch. It's a Miller. This is a trailer park. Put a little nozzle on the thing and it'll be good to go. Let's 
7580 or something in there. 7570. job like this all day, it kills the whole day. I gotta cut that oil tank up yet, four pieces and clean it. And... Probably charge them more for this flipping job. Be honest with you. Alright, let's see what happens. Got the button in the door here. Lead oil valve. We have ignition. So, good enough for this neighborhood. Alright, I just have to uh, turn the thermostat down and good to go. I did the service too, I did the service on it. oil tank and oil line. It's a Miller. Alright, I got everything picked up here and come on good. Pull the guy, he's got some keys here. I mean, looks good enough for this neighborhood. I just gotta call the fire chief now and should be fine. That's what they call a duplex fitting on the top. And it runs down, I got a check valve on the bottom. So once you once you pull the prime, you won't lose it. You shouldn't. Strapped it all in there and I should put the date on it too, huh? Uh, 
has the manufacturer's date. Here's the date I installed it. Looks good enough for this neighborhood.